and queen. He's Minister Codicus. Minister Codicus, let me pet his dog. He doesn't have a dog, idiot. Oh, yeah? I saw him beating up a centaur with his bare hands. He had three dogs with him. Oh, yeah? My parents know Minister Codicus. I've been to his mansion. I went to his mansion, and I ate his food. All right, welcome back. It's the big one, or one of several big ones in a row. We're ready, guys, today to try out Cordicus's Manor with Bract here, our engineer. We are going to be soloing the dungeon, checking out exactly what Zodger is uh, investigating. Someone in Kryta named Uzalan, who, by the way, is a famed inventor, has supposedly been buying uh, Snaf's old inventions, which doesn't sound very good, does it? Some of Uzan's inventions are around, and I thought I'd open up the whole uh, adventure today by showing you one of them. It's a giant uh, mechanical orchestra that is placed uh, kind of as like a mock festival, fun time, special thing here in the Eastern Collins. So here, we'll go have a look at this uh, right round here before we move on. And yeah, I've got a lot to talk to you about today, guys. This has genuinely been an extremely difficult challenge coming up that I've practiced the hell out of. Uh, putting me in mind of some of the old challenges we've done in the past. And uh, hopefully I'll be able to do really well for you all here on stream. Uh, but so, yes, check it out. Look, this uh, giant orchestra here. This was created by a famed inventor named Uzan of the humans. Who uh, seems to be doing some sketchy stuff. Pilfering inventions from Snaf. Or at least that's what Zodja thinks. And so she's gone to investigate. Meanwhile, the humans of... Uh, actually, do they have any dialogue here? Why can't people see that what Minister Cordicus is doing? Look at all of this. This isn't time to be throwing a party, not with so many threats to our safety. They say, oh, that's kind of interesting because Cordicus himself is throwing the party right now. Uh, so, yeah, Cordicus actually funds Uzalin, um, which you can find out from one of the human storylines. But, uh, yeah, Cordicus actually pays for that. And we'll, we'll find out more on that when we get to the dungeon in a second. Uh, but, yeah, it's a pretty nice little device. Anyone else got anything else to say here? Uh, doesn't really look like it. Maybe the old woman will come and sing and dance. It used to be, by the way, that this had multiple different songs it would play. But then it got stuck on a Winter's Day song, I think. The first Winter's Day that came into the game and it hadn't been updated for years. There also used to be confetti that would fall in on the screen as like a post-process effect. And the sponsorship of Minister Codicus the Wise. We wouldn't have such marvels. Uh, you don't really see the uh, confetti here. So, hello, Mr. Carnival Worker. He says, a great night for the carnival. Come, enjoy. What is there to do? He says, you can take a stroll to Hadrian's Menagerie or Uzan's Mechanical Orchestra. If you're feeling a bit more sporting, try Mina's Target Shooting or look for a bar brawl in the Busted Flagger. Both the Mina's Target Shooting and Bar Brawl uh, were meant to be activities for players to be able to enjoy, like, mini games, but were never actually added to the MMO. So we can ask where these things are, but they'll never be... Like, here, you can even say, can you mark on my map? Uh, and what's happened here is it's placed a personal waypoint for me. This is another uh, interesting aspect of the game. Uh, at any point on my minimap, if I just try and show you here. At any point on my minimap, I can... What are they saying over there? I don't know. I can uh, hold left alt and click, and it will set a waypoint for me. Uh, and you can use that to guide you to various places. And the game, this might be the only example of the game ever actually doing this. But sometimes when you speak to an NPC, they will actually put one down for you. So he's placed one here where the target shootout is. Which I can't even seem to get rid of now, which is kind of amazing. And you can even double up. Very, very peculiar mechanic, actually. Uh, but there you go. So, um... Cut content, content that we never really saw, and uh, that's a little bit about Uzlan, I suppose. Let's talk a bit about the challenge up ahead. Yes, it's going to be a dungeon. Yes, it was designed for five players. Yes, we're going to be soloing it. Yes, we're going to treat it as a permadeath thing, and we're going to try our best to not die once. Downstate is okay, but dying is not okay. And trust me, guys, there are some classes that can solo things kind of well. There's some this this dungeon we're going to for five players as well when they're all level 80 and well geared isn't even that bad. But us still low level on Brax trying to solo it on an engineer. This is a real challenge to not die. We could obviously just like graveyard rush it, but I'm determined not to have to do that. So we have to learn a lot of things. First of all. We have some new gear, so check it out. We are, of course, a full-fledged member of the Order Whispers now. We're just going rogue for a second to deal with this other thing at the uh, dungeon. 
And uh, yeah, we're, we're wearing new Order of Whispers gear. I do actually have, so this is the Whispers set, uh, a headpiece as well. If we wear it, you'll see we become really sneaky looking. We almost look female, I think, <laughs> when we've got this on. Uh, I'll wear it a li little bit, but yeah, we got a nice brand new rifle. And what I've actually done between videos is this is all honking new, perfectly up to date. We've leveled up a bit as well. Perfectly up to date, rare stuff. The stat set I'm going to be using in this dungeon is Rampages. So it's power, we do extra flat damage. It's precision, we have a chance to critically hit more. And it's condition damage. So whenever we, we deploy bleeds, say on our rifle three, or burns or poison, anything that damages over time, that does a reasonable amount. So very, very aggressive combination of stats here. And it's because we need it, because we're so weak and we're trying to do the damage of five players all on our own. So we, we've gone full on. There's no extra health here. There's no toughness here. It's all about the crazy big damage and trying to kill them. Because uh, otherwise it would take us ages to basically solo this thing because we have to do five times the work, right? So uh, there's that. That's the gear. Now also we're going to upgrade our gear. I have prepared at the trading post here. We've got some sigils and runes to look at. So let's take a look here. First on our armor. We're going to be slotting uh, something that may be a little bit familiar to you guys. Some runes. Four major runes. Once again, I'm going with Ogre. This gives us power. Then it gives us more ferocity. Then it gives us... What's the T3? Uh, more power. And then finally, it gives us a chance when we are attacked to summon a rock dog ally. Guys, this dungeon is complete. It's so hard to do without the rock dog ally under this setup. Okay, so much harder to do. So we're going to be reliant on that dog to uh, fight by our side and basically distract enemies, uh, as you will see very soon. Then we get two more slots for our major runes, and I'm actually taking altruism runes. So in the past, we're going to get, we're going to head to the, the dungeon now. We're on our, we've, we've actually got to walk there, so we're going to head out of Divinity's Reach and we're going to begin the journey. In the past, I used um, uh, flock runes, I think they were, which had that special effect that it would summon a bird to attack our foe. Uh, and I suspected this. It turns out to be true. There are some places in the game where you can summon full-on parrots and birds and things that will fight alongside you, like the rock dog. But that rune, that tier 2 bonus on the flock runes, that bird that comes and joins you is actually just like a small animation. It's not really... It's nothing that will take aggro. It won't fight at your side. It just flies down. It pecks someone in the eye and then runs off again. Flies off again. So um, that isn't necessarily that good. Uh, I know that's how we handled the Ascalon Catacombs. But uh, I I'm trying to improve. And we have to improve. Okay. So uh, instead now, I'm actually running Altruism Runes. So we get extra healing power here. So we heal ourselves a little bit better. But also... Whenever we use our heal skill, we gain two stacks of might. And we give it to our friends as well. We won't have any friends. Well, we will. We'll be able to give it to any NPC allies we have in there. And we will make friends as we go, right? But, I mean, if we were playing multiplayer as well, we'd give it to them. But, so, if you check this out, uh, if I equip my med kit... Or maybe it only works in combat. But basically, this gives you might. Uh, and we'll, that might turns into more power and even more condition damage. So basically, by going Rampage's gear... I'm going to drink my elixir here so that we move a little bit quicker. By going Rampage's gear and trying to stack a ton of might, we're going to buff our, might, our uh, condition damage and our power stats really, really, really high. And that's kind of the idea. That's, that's what we're really rushing and racing towards trying to get here. Uh, let's go this way. Let's keep following along the lakes by the way. Uh, this should be pretty good. So, um, so yeah, that's what we're doing with uh, runes, and I think they're pretty well set up there. Then we obviously have our fancy, by the way. Look at how good this rifle is. Our fancy new Order of Whispers rifle, uh, which is like full-on sniper rifle, sniper rifle mode, a bit like what Real uh, had equipped. Uh, and what we're going to be doing with this rifle is, first of all, a major sigil of agility. So I'll slot that in. What agility means is whenever you weapon swap, you gain swiftness, which lets us run around quicker. And we also gain quickness, which allows us activate skills and use all of our animations quicker. So I'll show you what the... Now, you might be like, but WP, you don't get to weapon swap on an engineer. But equipping and unequipping kits counts, okay? So if I go back to our grenade kit, all right, which I've shown you off before. While holding the grenade kit, I attack this wasp. When I unequip this grenade kit, look at my buffs, okay? See, we get two. We get 
quickness and we get swiftness. So basically these two boons will just sometimes come on and off of us as we equip and unequip our stuff. And that sigil is going to be really important for keeping us in the game, keeping our speed up with various things, all right? So really, really nice. Uh, that's one. And then the other one we're going to slot onto this badass rifle here is a sigil of strength, which is we have a 40% chance, so nearly half of all of our critical hits will give us might. So we're going to be stacking some might from our runes whenever we use a heal skill and just attacking things. If we get crits, we get might, okay? So, uh, yeah, we're just going to keep rolling that stuff up as much as possible. And the idea of what we're going to do to try and tackle this dungeon is really we have to go heavy on the damage so that we can kill things in a reasonable period of time, but also kill them before they kill us, which is kind of a standard thing for Guild Wars 2. It's core stuff uh, in many ways. Um, so, yeah, uh, that's a lot of the major stuff. Here's our first glimpse of Beetle Tun, by the way. Bracked, of course, having never explored here before. And uh, this giant building you can see in the background right now, that actually is um, Codicus's Manor itself. That's that's the manor. It's very large. Uh, and the, this dungeon, though it's called a dungeon, it's not really like the Ascalon Catacombs. It's actually an outdoors environment. Like, basically, behind this gate is the dungeon here. So, um, we're getting a bit, a little bit of frame drop as well. That's kind of interesting. Uh, so here you've got Fisherman Will. He says the life of a fisherman is usually slow and quiet, but occasionally we are beset with challenges that keep us from enjoying fishing. All right, we're not actually going to help him with his heart though, though. Uh, but yeah, check it out. Look, there's Ministry Guard. Ministry Captain Lang. And you remember very recently, it was a Ministry Captain... Uh, Landon that we just had to defeat outside the Order of Whispers. So we're more than familiar with these. I'll do my best. And he says, look, just turn around and be on your merry way. This is the estate of Minister Cordicus. You're not authorized to be here. You seem talented, we say. Surely you can see that I'm no threat. Flattery? Don't kid yourself. I'm going to pretend we never met now, and I suggest you do the same. Strength in numbers. What if I could help Lord Beetle Sun? You still deny me? Yes. Uh, w would you insult the Ministry Guard by insinuating that we're unable to handle any threat to the Minister? Okay, well, at least you're confident. And finally, we can even try, I go where I please. I have no quarrel with you yet. Uh, and he says, nor I with you, but you're not getting past this gate. I have my orders. Don't make me enforce them. Wow. Ha! You're worthy of this post. Goodbye. So the Ministry Guard really don't want anybody going in through the back. We're going to have to go for a bit of a swim here, by the way, guys, to get to the actual entrance of the village. Um, yeah, they don't really want anybody going uh, around the back there. So we will just go through the front entrance. And uh, yeah, we have an invitation to just attend a party, it seems at least. Uh, s celebrating the treaty that has gone undisturbed between humans and char. Doesn't seem too bad, right? By the way, I haven't really talked about this. You guys, I've had really amazing feedback to the fact we open and end these videos with like the little, uh, you know... Uh, vistas and whatnot. I just want to say thanks very much to everyone who likes that because I thought that stuff was really awesome I was wondering if people thought it'd be wasting time or whatever, but clearly it's captured you all uh, So yeah, we'll definitely have some good juicy stuff at the start and the end of this one um, Sort of showing that off, but here we go just as the Sun rises on the big day the day of the party We can walk over to this portal now. You'll see more carnival related stuff here as well I wonder if Uzland's re related to this lot here, too and, uh, yeah, you've got uh, this lady here who called Valera Jenkins. What does she say here? She says, Welcome to the estate of Minister Cordicus. Her Majesty, Queen Jenna of Kryta, is holding a soiree here. Logan has already gone ahead, but said that others may be coming to help. So we did, as Bracked, meet Logan very briefly. Uh, he got in an argument he, uh, at um, Lion's Arch. We, of course, know that he was a part of the adventuring band famed with Zodja. Um, so who is Minister Cordicus? Legate Minister Cordicus. Lord Beetlestone is the leader of the Chamber of Ministers. He often argues with the Queen, but has offered his home for his, this historic meeting with the Char. Sounds a bit suspicious. Let me ask another question. Is it suspicious? I mean, come on, maybe maybe Cordicus is a good guy. All this stuff that's been suspicious about Cordicus, but maybe he's all right. Did anybody ever think to defend Cordicus? I don't think so. Why is Queen Jenna here? The Char and the humans have reached a detente in their continual war. This party is to celebrate the treaty between the two species. 
Okay, sounds like an important party. Why is Logan here? Logan fears for the Queen's safety. I don't think he trusts Corticus at all. Mm -hmm. And finally, we can just say, well, what needs to be done? Well, nothing necessarily. We could just be having a party, guys. Look, maybe I'm just faking it. Maybe maybe it's easy peasy lemon squeezy. Gather a group of five total adventurers and go to the party in the main building. Logan should be waiting for you there. Wait, I want to ask something else. No, no, no. That's about it then, guys. So we can walk up and now we are ready. Minister Corticus, Lord Beetlestone is holding a party to celebrate the char slash human detente. Her Majesty Queen Jenna will be attending. Need more members? Go to LFG? Hell no. Enter story mode. Dungeon 2. And it's about infinitely harder than Dungeon 1. Alright, let's get into a little bit of theory craft here. I've got a couple more things that we need to train. First of all, because we've leveled up to this point now, we are allowed the double specializations, just as we utilized when we were going through Ascalon Catacombs. So that's very good. We're going to pick up explosives. Uh, firearms and explosives I've already talked to you about on the series. And these are the way I'm taking this. I have practiced this challenge utilizing inventions, tools, and alchemy. And they all have sort of like vague uses. But I've actually now beat this several times using only firearms and explosives. And it gets us through a bit quicker. So this is what I'm going to be going for. In fact, I think this is actually, because it gets you through quicker, this is the sturdiest, safest way to tackle this, okay? So I'm going to show you one selection of traits, and that is like a definitive way of getting through this right now. Um, so first of all, for explosives, we've already seen a lot of this stuff. I think we picked up glass cannon before, maybe. Uh, maybe we did big boomer before. And we're, obviously we were looking at orbital commands before. However, uh, we're going to change that up. First, we're going to take grenadier. So I never showed you this, but now that we have the grenade kit, we can take the associated trait, increase the throw velocity and blast radius of your grenades. Also take reduced fall damage, and when you take fall damage, you can uh, create a huge explosion, a barrage of grenades everywhere through a skill called Explosive Descent. But basically, yeah, we're going to pick up this grenadier trait. It's not essential. You could take the other ones as well, just to be clear. Um, like this one could just straight up buff our power and it might be kind of nice. I'm going to take Grenadier though just for the speed. So to show you what this looks like. No Grenadier. A grenade throw looks like this. You know, they're fairly slow. With Grenadier, they move a lot quicker. And basically each of these explosions where it lands now, they're all a lot bigger. It sounds uh, just a little bit too quiet to be honest. I'll turn it up just a bit. Um, so yeah, they, they basically are going to move a lot quicker. And we're going to be spamming tons of grenades, especially enhanced grenades throughout this, okay? So yeah, we're going to pick that up. Next, we're also going to take the aim-assisted rocket. So whenever we hit someone, we create seeker rockets. Once every 10 seconds, we'll get an extra rocket that will fly out. It's an explosion, you remember that. Uh, and now actually we need to get a new Grandmaster. We're not going to use Orbital Command. We're going to learn a new one. Remember, Grandmasters are all extremely potent. So coming back to the explosives line, we're actually going to get this next one. Shrapnel. I think I talked about this very briefly before. Explosions have a chance to cripple and they cause bleeding on hit. So... We want this, not necessarily because of the damage from the bleeding, which is nice, okay? But we, we want this mainly because of actually the cripple. Uh, so each grenade is an explosion. So we throw out three explosions at once, which is three chances at once to proc shrapnel, which means that we could put tons of bleed and cripple out. Now that cripple, that just basically means we're going to whoever we're fighting will be permanently crippled. Which is excellent because it helps to wear down break bars. With this trait, break bars become something we can easily deal with. And with break bars being something we can easily deal with, anyone dangerous we find inside this mansion in a second will be able to actually stun and run away from and stuff. Purely because of the shrapnel. Shrapnel also gives us bleed, which, let's look back up at firearms. I'm going to keep firearms. We're currently using Sanguine Array, remember, from the previous video? And this means that we get might whenever we put bleeding on someone. So the bleed, I don't really care too much about the bleed damage itself, though it will be nice. But this means that every time we proc shrapnel, we give ourselves might. And might gives us more damage and condition damage, which makes the bleed itself do more. So the combination of this Grandmaster with this is really where a huge amount of our damage is coming from. So this is a great synergy we take with both of these lines. I'm going to stay on no scope, which we've been running already. This just means we crit a lot and we get fury and we crit more. 
And our crit's worth more. Uh, and then lastly, we do have Juggernaut as our Grandmaster right now when we were playing with a Flamethrower. I'm, in, I'm also going to buy another new Grandmaster. Going back to the end of Firearms, we're going to pick up this one all the way over here. Incendiary Powder. This is the last Grandmaster for Firearms. And what this says is burning we inflict lasts longer and our critical hits will now start inflicting bleeding. So if you look at that, we do 1,159 damage on burning, just, just randomly rolling in the background. That's really nice. And it lengthens all of our burns. So basically, everything else you guys have already seen, you know how this is going to be. But this synergy of the shrapnel plus all of the might from the sanguine array is going to be really, really massive for us. So excellent. That just, then, that just leaves us finally with our skills, which I guess I'll talk about in a second. Skills we can do last of all. Let's have a little bit of a look inside the uh, mansion here. So there's lots of places we can sneak around and check out. You remember before when I was talking about the Ascalon Catacombs, that the game is structured that you do a story dungeon, and then it unlocks the ability to do side stories later? Well, it's the side stories, really, that all of this stuff is relevant for. Uh, so here you can see we've got... Um, you know, a repair anvil in there. If we die a lot, our armor breaks and we can fix it. But aside from that, there's really no reason to hang around here. In fact, just minor spoilers, I guess. And it's very minor. These are the servant quarters. The people who can't actually work in the... Uh, they, I guess the servants live here, right? To go and work in the mansion. The, just behind this gate is actually where this dungeon's going to end. It, like, loops us back here. But there's that, no actual reason to hang out in any of these places. I did want to show the area off, though, for the LP. It's funny, you can bug your way into this house, too. And there's, like, a full thing in there. There used to be some tricks you could do. The dungeons are interesting because for the first couple of years of Guild Wars 2's life, they were like the be-all and end-all for the end game. And so people found all these really crazy fun little tricks you could play around with that most people have forgotten these days. Anyway, so uh, yeah, it looks like the mansion is ready. I'm going to take this. I, I don't want to look too suspicious, okay? So we're going to take the... We're going to hide this. I'm going to put my grenades away as well and stow the rifle. Hello, Mr. Butler. Welcome. I expected you to approach. Well, I did indeed. Does he say anything else? I guess not. So this is Albert the Butler. Uh, interesting story. He will appear in the story. Welcome to Beetlestone Manor. The celebration is in the central court. There you go. Thank you. Interesting story. He will appear once again way later down the line. He'll make a cameo appearance. So thank you very much, Albert. Props to anyone who remembers Albert here. Welcome to Beetlestone Manor. Celebration is in the central court. And uh, who remembers it here and calls him out next time we see him in the story because it's going to be such a minor thing. Oh, look at all the servants bowing to us. This is lovely. Hello, everybody. Oh. So you see that there's a door here on the right. These doors can actually open and close. All of them have got scripts where they'll be able to do different things. Here we've got a cool library on the left. Uh, but as for the story dungeon, some of the rooms will be sealed off and we won't be able to go into. We can actually go behind that one, but yeah. So, hello, servants. They're all bowing to us. Ooh, guys. Doesn't look very pretty in this courtyard. And look who it is straight away. It's Logan and the Queen. So, Bract meeting the Queen here. And there's Zodger. Let's speak with Zodger straight away. If you're going to hang around, make yourself useful. Hey, Zodger. I guess um, she's not got a very warm welcome for us here. Uh, what kind of help do you need, we say? She says, the quiet kind. Just keep your eyes open. Uh, why are you here? Uh, she says, I've tracked some of Snaf's creations back to here. I suspect Uzlan. We can say Snaf. She says, my old master, one of the great Assyrian inventors. We, of course, knew that. We were just checking. You guys have got to understand, right? It could have been a Norn player character at this point, speaking to Zodja. Uh, so they add that in there. Um, what sort of creations? Some of his old golem parts were stolen by humans. Oh, so humans stole the old golem parts? Hmm, how interesting. Uh, what else? Why Uzalan? Isn't it obvious, she says, he's a fraud. He couldn't inv innovate his way out of a paper satchel. Huh. So she thinks that the famous inventor, funded by Corticus, who built that amazing thing before, is a fraud. Hmm. And again, you'll get more insights on this, guys, if you play the game yourself and check out the uh, circus story uh, for humans. Okay, so I'm already very useful. Thanks very much. Okay, well, it's good to see you, Zodja. I get a little bit of a frame drop, guys. Give me one second just to, to refresh. Also, by the way, pay attention to the music here. It's so Oblivion and Jeremy sold to me. I also think this is one of the only places in the entire game this track ever plays. All right, let's see if that's fixed it. I hope it has. All right, so, um... Yeah, uh, also over here, you'll check it out. There's Flunt, the, uh, Asura that we met before. We're hard of hearing. Hey, dude! Uh, he says, Hmph, I seem to have misplaced something, or someone. Who or what are you missing, we say? He says, it will come to me. Hang on. 
no, no, that wasn't it. So he's still forgetful here. While you're thinking, may I ask you something else? Are you enjoying the party? Oh, yes. I particularly like the sausages in a blanket. Interesting design. Dude, pigs in blanket are amazing. Hell yeah, that's like a staple of the Christmas roast. Uh, what else? What do you think about the other guests? No, you seem pleasant. That Uslan was extremely rude to me earlier. Okay, so Flunt already doesn't like Uslan. Uslan himself is here. Check him out. Check him out. The inventor extraordinaire. You'll be impressed by my new invention. Just wait, you'll see. <laughs> uh, tell me what you've been working on. Wait for the demonstration. It would be a surprise for everyone. Oh my god, guys, look at the typo. Okay, listen, I, I want us to all appreciate and enjoy the core story. But the simple fact is, there has been little work put into it in some places in this game. And I cannot always hide from it. Yes, this is still a typo in the game several years after release in a main series dungeon. It be a surprise for everyone, he says. Um, they have it. <laughs> Uh, do you like working for Cordicus, we ask? He says he's the most kind employer. He allows me my little experiments. What do you think of Her Majesty? I am loyal to the Crichton throne. I just wish its current occupant wasn't so keen on working with the Char. Ooh. So this guy doesn't seem, quite openly, doesn't seem to enjoy the treaty. Hold on, isn't this a party celebrating the treaty? Doesn't seem quite right. Uh, speaking of the Char, there's one right here. I'm here to protect the truce, to help the truce between human and char. But I miss my warband, she says. You're here on behalf of the char legions? I'm here to further negotiations with the Crichtons over Ebonhawk. Interesting. Where is your warband? They are around. I mean, to say, they're always in my thoughts. I wonder if she lost her. So, Mia Kindle shot. Uh, are you enjoying the party? I find our host disconcerting. His manner is devious, like the flame legion. Oh, gosh. Okay. Uh, who else we got? Well, here we got a Norn. We don't know much about the Norn right now, but this guy's called Sigfast. Uh, so he says, Who do you have to thump on around here to get some decent mead? Why, are you here at the party? I represent my father, Newt Whitebear, and the Norn of Holbrack. Okay, what do the Norn of Holbrack have to do with this? Are you enjoying yourself? Not yet. It's too warm in this land, and the alcohol is weak. <laughs> I take it you need a drink. No, I need many drinks. <laughs> Um, so by the way, something might have occurred to you guys here. There's a ton of dialogue that I can get uh, by speaking to these characters. Like, I can even come all the way over to this servant. I like it here. Or Dagonet, maybe, or something. So you go, a representative of the Silvari. I find humans to be the most interesting people. What's your role here? I am the ambassador of the Pale Tree to Kryta. Are you enjoying the party? Very much so. It's amusing to see Captain Logan swooning over the Queen. I wonder if he's a firstborn or not. That being one of the eldest Silvari, I can't quite recall. Uh, but you notice there's all this dialogue I can have. When, in truth, there is an NPC right at the start, Logan, that we could speak to. And that would trigger a cutscene in the start of the whole dungeon. So there's an interesting little bit of design here that the devs sort of flirt with, but never come back to in Guild Wars. And I like weird bits of trivia like this. So basically, what's happening here, guys, is... The devs are giving us something to do that be speak to people while waiting for our IRL friends or guildies to join up and meet us at the party so that we can gather our five heroes and then go off in. And, uh, you know, like, this is essentially like a waiting room lobby style thing that they're flirting with. And most of the other dungeons, they don't really worry too much. Um, but yeah, I, I think that's kind of cool the way that they handled it here. There's also a lady here called Monique Delana. And she says, this is a very different place than Ebonhawk. Now, Ebonhawk, the, the final city where humans still live in the very south of Ascalon. We've heard a little bit about it. Uh, we've seen the Asura Gate that leads there, but we've, we've not been it. Does, nothing we've ever heard about Ebonhawk makes it sound like a nice place. It sounds war-torn and dreary. And the people there are supposedly hardened and, you know, of a particular mindset. Let's, like, let's say that. And it seems she's from Ebonhawk. Oh, you're from Ebonhawk. What is it like, we say? And she says, It is a city that has been under siege for centuries by the Char. Peace is a new thing for us. What do you think of the Char human peace treaty uh, agreement? I'm suspicious. The Char are not to be trusted, she says. Interesting. Uh, what do you think of Queen Jenna? We are loyal to our queen, regardless of her decisions, for as long as she lives. So wait, you're from Ebonhawk, but you're a Crichton, right? Okay. Uh, what do you think of the other ambassadors here today? Typical of their people's... Dagonet is curious, Flunt is confused, Mia is valiant, and Sigfast is drunk. 
<laughs> I love that line. Also, what is this? Flunt is confused. Sorry, the ambassador of the Asura. That's how you typify them. I take issue with that. We are not a confused people. Believe me, we understand much more of the eternal alchemy than you could possibly fathom. Thanks for the heads up, though. All right, so she seems like quite a colorful character. And then, of course, we get this cool, like, area here. Um, well, we can talk about that in a second. Look, let's speak to Logan. Uh, I guess the queen first. Will the queen actually want to speak to us? Forgive me if I, may, if I seem distracted. One of my handmaidens is ill. Really? I'm sorry to hear that. Where is she? In one of the rooms of the manor. She's resting, but I'm still concerned. Interesting. You know, that's not actually, uh, like, uh, touched again. Maybe that's talking about an explorable idea. Also, guys, this is where Demi Beetlestone grew up and lived. Like, we're literally stand- Demi, we just escorted out of Kryta, basically, into safety at the- at the Chantry of Secrets. And right at that moment in the timeline for this story, we now all come back. I love that touch. I've been so excited to, like, draw that connection, right? This is where Demi came from. We've gone back to where she came from. Uh, can I ask you something else? What do you think of Logan here? My captain is the bravest of the Seraph. I fear he thinks with his heart sometimes. Mm. Uh, what do you think of Cordicus? Lord Beetlestone is a lo loyal Crichton, despite our differences over policy. She's very tight-lipped there. Probably good for a queen to be tight-lipped. But okay, Jenna. All right, Logan. What's going on, man? He says, Her Majesty Queen Jenna is meeting the Char Ambassador here at the party. Tell me when, you've, when you're ready to go. We're ready. Your Majesty, I'm not sure you and the Ambassador should have come here. That's ridiculous, Captain. This is the perfect place to celebrate the detente with the Char. There are Separatists that want this treaty torn apart, and for all we know, Codicus is in cahoots with them. Minister Codicus is loyal to the Crown, even if he and I disagree. He is loyal to the Crown, true. But I wonder if he's loyal to the head it rests upon. Do you need any help here? Yes, I don't trust some of the guests. Ask around and see what you turn up on Codicus. But be subtle. You know, I really don't blame Logan right now. I think he may have a goddamn good point. There's a lot of suspicious going. We've seen several suspicious characters. We've seen people b openly saying they don't like the idea of the treaty. By the way, just to add a note on that, I don't necessarily dislike any NPC that doesn't like the treaty. It's easy for us playing a game to be like, oh yeah, they should totally opt for peace or whatever. But I think it's another thing to really actually seat yourself within this world and appreciate centuries of warfare coming to an end. That's like never going to be easy, right? Right? There's so generational hatred built into these people that's just not going to go away. Um, but Logan's right to be concerned, absolutely. Also, you notice there that we, Bracked, actually get to speak in a dungeon cutscene. I don't know whether that happened in Ascalon Catacombs, but uh, it does It does happen here and in several of the others. It's just if we were in a party with lots of people, it might be someone else's character who speaks to Logan. But hey, dude. I guess he doesn't have anything else to say to us. Monique has the same dialogue. All right, so here we go. This is the first part of the dungeon. Uh, definitely the easiest part of the dungeon because it's a zero combat moment. Um, basically, if you look on the top right, it says talk to the guests to investigate the situation. Talk to the party goers and search for clues. And we get to gather rumors. So there could be five players doing this right now. But basically, we just go to different characters like Flunt here. And he says, are you another inventor? It seems this party is swimming in them. Well, yes, I am an inventor. Did I get a chance to tell you about my trans-atmospheric conver- Okay, all right, fine, fine. Uh, is there a problem with too many inventors, we ask him? <sighs> Soja's here. And this Ouzalon Cretan. No one wants to talk to me about my interstitial spellholder. And you'll see, by doing that, speaking to him in that way, we now no longer can for a little while. But on the top right, you'll see we've got a little tiny bit little bit of progress. Now when we speak to him again, we can say something else like, Inventors, I'm interested in our host, Lord Cordicus. That, that's good to gather some rumours. Let's steer the conversation towards that. Seems like a bright sort <laughs> for a human. And so Flunt kind of likes Cordicus. Now because of that response, we actually get zero progress. That it, Flunt just said he liked Cordicus. Well, that's not a rumour, is it? So we get nothing there. The idea is to fill the bar up by mingling around the party. I actually, so, so, and then finally we have anyone in particular troubling you? I have to say, this Ouzalon creature is particularly suspicious. And there you go, so he says Ouzalon's particularly suspicious. With that final uh, one, you'll actually notice we got a lot of progress. So the way this works, guys, is every NPC has an option that will no will give no progress, they have an option that will give a tiny bit of progress, and they have an option that will give a little bit. 
Now imagine you've got five players running around the garden, doing the conversation all at once, checking all kinds of dialogue. Uh, and the bar fills up until the very top. So I happen to know, I've practiced this so much, I know every single perfect bit of dialogue in here. So let's go through. Uh, so Zerja says, you look like you're looking for something or someone. And uh, we can note to her that sh you seem to be scanning the crowd. Someone here is using my master's old discoveries. I want to find out who. Okay, so she's uh, she's checking that out. We already kind of knew that, but I guess if uh, we were a player of another race or something just coming in, that would be uh, a, a rumor of some sort. But yeah, that buffs the rumor bar the most for Zodja. Over here, we have Mia. The human queen is the most gracious, but I feel a bit uneasy. Uh, and so we can uh, say, I'm sure it's nothing. Who would seek to spoil such a celebration? Or is there anything in particular that's bothering you? We'll just be straight and direct. And she says, oh, That Uzalon seems familiar. I think I've seen him in Ebonhawk. Ha, huh, so uzalon has been in Ebonhawk too? Uzalon is not actually relevant for the questioning pro uh, process. We can't, like, he's basically got different dialogue. Uh, what does Jenna say at this point, I wonder? Uh, same stuff, I guess. Same stuff. So, what does Sigfast say? Can we get any rumors from Sigfast? The spirits of the wild welcome you. Oh, the spirits of the wild welcome you. I love the Norn dialogue, man. So good. All right, so, uh, he says, these human lads are a pain. Yeah, the weather's too hot, the beds are too short, and the ale's too weak. Uh, don't like the ale. Why are you here, then? I actually, oh my god, I think I forgot. No, I think it's, it's this one. Why are you here, then, we ask him. My father says travel broadens the mind. No, I messed it up. I was so arrogant and big booted there, and I, I totally messed it up. I'm pr I thought it was maybe a challenge. Oh well, we'll come back to him later when we can speak to him again later. All right, so you got that. Uh, let's now go t -t -t down here and speak with some of these guys out in the garden. So we have a servant. Hello. He says, I hope you're enjoying the party. So, Servant, it's his job to make sure the guests are all feeling good and comfortable and relaxed. And probably not his job to start rumors. So, being direct is probably not a good idea. What have we got? Have there been any threats to the celebration? Mm, I don't know. Are those sausages in a blanket, we can ask him? Or have you seen anything interesting at the party? Well, the best option is the bottom one. Uzalan the artist is supposed to unveil his new invention. Ooh, so, yeah, uh, we actually heard about that as well. So, uzlon has got this invention. This is the very same one that Zodj is curious about. Dagonet. I find these parties fascinating. So many complex connections. Um, cool. Reminds me so much of Seven of Nine from Star Trek Voyager there as she tries to learn what it's like to interact with people. Um, so, basically, here we're going to go... Minister Cortica seems to know the most interesting people, eh? He surrounds himself with people who do not like Queen Jenna. Well, Dagonet's noticed that straight away, that he surrounds himself with opposition to her. It's tough to prosper nowadays, but we try. Another servant. She says, how may I help you? As a servant, you must hear many interesting things, we ask. Oh, many things. Uzalon has been extremely secretive about his new invention. Ooh. So that's maximum rumor mongering there. We're now at the edge of the party, by the way. So that barn over there is a part of this dungeon, but not in the story mode. So we're not actually going to be able to go out into that barn here. But if you return and do some of the side stories, you can. That gate there, by the way, that's the, the other side of the gate we were at before as we were walking over here with the Ministry Guards just on the other side. That's the lake we were swimming across. Uh, interesting bit of trivia. If you break out of the dungeon and run all the way off into the distance over there, well out of map boundaries, you can find a strange hidden puzzle room that had been in the game for years and years and years. And uh, only more recently actually ended up paying off in a story update. So... Uh, this will not be the only time we come to Cordicus's Manor. Let me just say that much. Okay, so uh, we got that. What else have we got? We've got Minister Cordicus himself. Hello, sir. You look very good. He says, you're welcome at my home any time. Just don't break anything valuable. Okay, well, we're only allowed in the garden right now, I think. Uh, so you don't have to worry about that. What's your relationship with the Queen, we ask? He says, I fear it is my task to preserve Kryta, sometimes against its ruler's follies. I mean, I, I don't see anything wrong with this, right? Like, it's a democracy that they've got going on, as far as I'm aware, of, right? Like, don't, she's the queen, but then they have, like, a senate or whatever, yeah? If he's basically, you know, just her shadow, then that's fine. Uh, what's uh, your inventor, Uzlan, working on? He won't tell even me, but he assures me it will be brilliant. Ah, okay, so you don't even know what Uzlan's up to. You just fund him. Uh, Logan doesn't like you much. <laughs> we can be very blunt. Why? The good captain sees villains everywhere, even where there are none. 
Hmm, I guess it's up to you guys to decide whether that's true or not based on all the story we've seen so far. So check out the cool pool here. We get little pygmy mowers. Interestingly enough, in Queensdale, the adjoining map, there is a dynamic event where you find an Asura who trains pygmy mowers and escorts them here to Beetle Tun. You can see that the map's changed a little bit, but takes them through Queensdale. Uh, and I wonder if the suggestion is these are the same ones from that dynamic event chain. Kind of cool. And we got these cool floating things here. I suppose for us as an Asura, this isn't too crazy. Uh, but humans, I'm sure, are mystified by this kind of magic. Uh, another person we can check out over here. He says, would you like an appetizer? And uh, we can just basically... Okay, so we can be very direct. Logan thinks Cordicus is up to something. Have you seen anything suspicious around? Or just what's supposed to happen next? Uzalan the artist is supposed to unveil his new invention. All right, it really all seems to be about this new invention, right, guys? The tension is palpable. Okay, so there you go. Uh, now we've basically spoken to all of the different NPCs, at least once. And we've got about 50, over 50% 50 progress, right? Because we got them all right. Uh, so, in truth, you only need to do, like, one circle and a little bit. Uh, but when you've got five party members, people are going to speak to them and get the wrong options, and it gets a bit more messy than that. Here, by the way, it, you may have noticed with the floating rocks, if we stand at just... There's one thing that's going to have been on all of your minds this entire video, and it's you've been wanting me to show this off. Don't worry, guys. So, yeah, if you stand just at the right place, maybe it isn't there. You can, like, there you go. That's about as good as it gets. That is Cordicus's face, everybody. Cordicus's face. It's brilliant. This is actually, the, the face itself is modeled after uh, one of the art directors, I guess it was. Um, at ArenaNet, uh, working on Guild Wars 2 as it was coming out. So it's kind of an homage to one of their uh, more talented or recognizable, well-known uh, artists on the dev team. So really kind of cool. And you get that very, very specific angle. Another thing I love about this is, A, the idea that Cordicus would have at his own home, at his own face floating. But you'll notice something too, right? The village is out there. The, the common people, they're out there. And he's got this set up. Not that the face points them where the most people would see it and it would be worth something. No, 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 no. He has it pointing inwards so that, like, from his master bedroom up there, he can see it. <laughs> and by the way, when I circle around that and I say that's like a bedroom or whatever, when we go inside the mansion scene, you'll see there's, like, two proper floors. You get to go up into all these windows and things. It's great. It's not, like, faked. This is a real building we'll be able to go into. I always like the way that Guild Wars 2 handles interiors because the original game was so poor with them. Uh, but, yeah, so, uh, anyway... That's about everything I can say about that. We now just get to go through again. Uh, we missed Sigfast dialogue before. Didn't we go the middle? We did. No, we went top. It's definitely not. It must be this. Don't like the ale, we say? It's not horrible. I've had it before in Ebony. So, there you go. Uh, that's probably one of the more nuanced ones. Basically, what he's saying is this ale from this party is from Ebonhawk. So, there seems to be a lot of Ebonhawk activity revolving around here. And frankly... Ebonhawk would be a hive of people who do not like the idea of this treaty because they are people who have been very recently still getting sieged and attacked by the Char. Uh, so I could give you all the same dialogue again to trigger this or we could just spitball and see where we land just to hear other dialogue. I kind of want to do that. Let's say um, I'm looking for anyone acting suspicious. Take a number. But you're right. There is something up. So there you go. Zod just says that. Flunt, what else do you have? We already did all of his dialogue. Screw him. We don't need to do any more of his. Mia, how's it going? Human queen is gracious. The best one is to be direct with her. Let's say this. Who would seek to spoil such a celebration? Many charring humans want to see this peace initiative fail. Okay, she's not very specific, but she is absolutely right. Okay. Uh, what about you? What's... I want to ask, are those sausages in a blanket? Yes. The Asura ambassador really likes them. <laughs> Look, Flunt really likes them. That's amazing. We got zero progress for that. <laughs> uh, before we are, we said that Cordica seems to know the most interesting people. Let's say, what do you find most interesting about Kryter? I find Kryter to be very pleasant. All right, that was not intriguing whatsoever. We got a dead, we got a dead one there as well. Hello, Mrs. Servant. Um, have you seen anyone suspicious around? Codicus's favorite inventor, Uzalan, keeps checking his watch. Ooh, that's a pretty uh, interesting little reveal right there. Okay. Hopefully that's nothing too major. What about you over here? Um, so last time asking what was supposed to happen next was the best thing. Uh, why don't we say Logan thinks Cordicus is up to something? Appetizer? Sausage in the blanket? <laughs> he just changes the subject. He's actually holding a tray of foods as well. That's brilliant. 
Okay, yeah, get on my little mini golem in the pool there. Get out of there. Silly Mark 1 Assault Golem. Don't you do that. Okay, um... Alright, let's just finish it off now. Okay, so, uh, you're scanning the crowds, Zodja. And then we can come over to Vlant and say, is anyone in particular troubling you? I have to say this. And we can say that, and then Mia, we can go back over here. Oh, that is long seems familiar. I think I've seen it. And voila. There you go. We are done, and we're going to report to Logan. Now the dungeon is going to begin. From what you've told me, this kind of deviltry stinks of Codicus. I disagree. The inventor Uzalon is obviously up to something. Then we should confront both of them. Fine. If that's the plan, we should check with this Uzalon first. Maybe he'll tell us more about his employer. All right. So, a couple of things. Uh, we've got to be really careful. There's so much to watch. I hope that the, if the scene plays out, you guys can watch very closely here because about 20 things are going to happen. I must speak to you of a threat to the queen. A threat to the queen? Then you know about our plot. We will not be stopped. Go on. Initiate Clan Alpha. Uh-oh. Shut up. Look out. Oh, look at the queen. Look at the, the char. Look at Sigfast. <laughs> 